Hello beautiful people, I'm Ashutayami back with another video. In this video, we are going to talk about string variables and how we can utilize them in prototyping. Now, as you can see, we have a neat prototype design on the left side and a messy prototype design on the right side, which is the usual way of our prototype management. So if I play this application, which is a really futuristic application which can take you to Rome and Prague by just a single click. Now if you look at this on the left side I'm just using a single screen with string variables used in prototypes and on the right side is our old way of prototyping which we are not going to use anymore. So how did we do that? Let's see. So if you have been following me from the first tutorial of this series you already know how to make variables and how to make string variables. But in this video, we are going to use string variables in prototype. Now, if you go to level variables, we already have words and colors from our last two tutorials. We are going to make a different collection, name it cities, and make a variable in this one and use the strings in it. And for the name, I'm going to go with city name in camel case. And for value, I'm going to put Hamburg for now. Now I'm going to get back to this later, but for now, let's leave it at that. Now the second thing we got to do is if we have to make a component set of these three images, we have three images ready here. What you can do is click here and click on create component set. Now we have three images in a component set. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the property name to city name and give the first one Hamburg second one Rome, third one Prague. That's it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these variants into my amazing mobile app design that is not aligned and spacing is messed up but hey it takes you to places. Anyway now I'm going to select this prototype go to design and right here I'm going to assign the variable city name. That's the most important part. So now we have assigned the variable to the variant. Now all we have to do is assign the interaction on the, each of these buttons. So first I'm going to select Hamburg, go to prototype plus interaction, go here, set variable, select the city name variable and I'm going to just type in Hamburg. That's it. Similarly for room, interaction, set variable, select the city name and Rome and similarly for Prague go to interactions set variable select the city name and name this one Prague that's it now let's hope it works woohoo it does <laughs> so how is it working let's see as I said, the most important part was assigning the variable. How did we do that? Let's have a look at it again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to grab this image again and I'm going to resize this. Make a duplicate. Actually make four duplicates. And I know this pacing looks terrible, but let's continue with this because I'm not going to ship this product. Or maybe I would. Who knows? Anyway. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select these three objects and assign them the variable city name. Now this city name is the same variable that we were assigning when we were setting the variable in prototype. When we click that, now the Figma prototype knows what to do when this button is clicked. Because we have set the variable city name to Hamburg and this Hamburg is the same property name that we had defined right here. If I misspell it to Hamburg G, it won't change. Let's see. Rome is working, Prague is working, but Hamburg is not. So all Figma is doing is, it is just changing the states of these three variants to the one that we had defined in the prototype, which is defined right here. Make sense? I guess it does. Word of advice, if it still doesn't make any sense, you should follow the video step by step and make your own prototype, maybe with different names and different images. But you should know that you must keep the names of the property 
and the variance same as you would define in the prototype settings. So yeah, that's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video and comment below if you liked it or maybe if you didn't like it and you didn't understand it, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. See you in the next one. Cheers.